Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve four problems, four quant quantitative comparison problems that are not actually in the book. They are bonus problems. They are bonus problems. Don't try to look for them in the book. They do not exist. They are not in the book. These four problems I gave you as homework in yesterday's videos and I ask you to solve these questions ahead of time. If you have not solved them ahead of time, then each time when I put the problem on the blackboard, pause the video immediately without my having to remind you. Pause the video immediately after I write down the problem. Solve the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. So here's the first question. 2.4.6 and this is the continuation from where we left off at 2.4.5 which appears on page number 243. Page 243. Even though these questions are not in the book, but it's a continuation of what we left off on page 243. Here's the first problem. We're being asked to compare the product of the roots of this quadratic equation. Quadratic equation that is given to us is 2x squared minus x minus 6. We are asked to find the product. We are asked to compare the product of this, uh, of this equation versus 0 versus 0. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's put it on the, on the top here. 2x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. These are called quantitative comparison questions. And quantitative comparison questions are very different than simple multiple choice questions because in the quantitative comparison questions nobody's, ask, nobody's asking us to compute anything. These are not called these are not called quantitative computation, they are called quantitative comparison. Our job is simply to compare the two quantities, not compute the bloody thing. It's very important to keep that in mind. And if you want to practice these questions, if you want to get better at these questions, watch 70 videos on my, on my channel you will find that there is a series of 70 videos, quantitative comparison questions, just type in GRE Math, day 401. From, page, from, from day 401 through 470, you're going to find those 70 videos where we solve, I believe, uh, 210 quantitative comparison questions. Watch them, learn, learn how to solve them, practice them, you'll get better at them. What can we do here? Here, we have two numbers here. Here we have two numbers, 2 and a negative 6. 2 and a negative 6. 2 and a negative 6, their product has to be negative 12. The product has to be negative. We're looking for two numbers whose product has to be equal to negative 12. And what else? And their sum has to be negative. Their sum has to be negative 1. Their sum has to be negative 1. So what can we do here? Their sum has to be negative 1. Can you think of such a scenario where the product of two numbers is negative 12 and their sum is equal to negative 1? Well, if sum is negative 1 and the product is negative 12, which means 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. And since we want the sum to be negative 1, it has to be negative 4 and a positive 3, because the other way around, if we had positive 4 and a negative 3, would have given us a sum of a positive 1. We want a sum to be negative 1, which means it's negative 4 and a positive 3. But that's not the point. The point here is that, the point here is that they have conflicting, they have conflicting signs. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. One has to be positive and one has to be negative. If that's the case, if you have two roots, if you have two roots and you know they are of the conflicting sign, then we are done. We are done. The problem is done. We are, look, we are looking for product of the roots. Product of the roots. That was the first column, column A. And the column B was zero. There was no, it's just zero. And the product, of course, has to be negative. A negative quantity and a positive quantity. We don't have to find out the roots here. We don't have to spend our time looking for the roots. We simply have to realize that the product is going to be negative. The product of these two roots is going to be negative. Negative versus zero. Of course, zero is bigger. The answer is B. Of course, zero is bigger. The answer is B. Because we realize right away, just simply looking at it, that the product has to be a negative quantity. Because they are opposite. They are of the opposite sign. Let's do the next one that, we, that was given to us. 
In the next one, we'll have to do some work. In the next one, we'll have to do some work. 2.4.7. 2.4.7, we are told, we are given the equation, x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. And we are told to compare, to compare the sum of the roots, the sum of the roots versus column B, their product, product of the roots. And here we have no choice but to figure out the, exactly what the roots are because we need to find out their, their sum and their product so we can compare them. Let's get going, shall we? It's not going to be that bad, don't worry about it. So we have x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 2. The product has to be positive 2 and the sum has to be negative 3. Ah, if the sum, if the product of two numbers has to be positive 2, if the product has to be positive 2 and their sum has to be sum has to be negative 3, there is only one possibility. The two numbers have to be negative 2 and a negative 1 because negative 2 plus a negative 1 is going to give us negative 3, which is their sum. And their product is going to be negative 2 times a negative 1, which is going to give us positive 2. Let's see what we So we have negative 2 and a negative 1. Remember, negative 2 and negative 1. So x squared minus negative 2 and a negative 1x plus 2x. As a matter of fact, as soon as we realize that it's negative 2 and negative 1, we are done. But we're going to finish it anyway. Because now we can figure out the sum and the, and the product. The product is going to be the product of... Because we have, you see, we just said it here, negative, negative 2 and a negative 1, negative, negative times negative is positive, the product is going to be positive, and the sum is going to be negative. The sum of the roots is going to be negative, the product is going to be positive, we're done. The answer is B. The answer is B, or is it? Think about it for a second. Did I make a mistake? Are the, are the, are the roots, are the roots negative? Negative 2 and negative 1? No, they are not. Here's what happens. Okay, here's what I'm going to continue here. I'm going to continue here. Take your time. The common factor is x. It's going to be x minus 2. Common factor here is 1, or rather negative 1. And it's going to be x minus 2 is equal to 0. x minus 2 is, is here. x minus 2. And here we have x minus 1 equal to 0, which means either x minus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. And what are the products? Or what are the roots rather? The roots are not negative 2 and negative 1, which is a very common mistake. People who are in a rush not to finish it. x minus 2 is one factor, x minus 1 is another factor, which implies that x is positive 2 or positive 1. The roots are not negative 2 and positive, negative 2 and po negative 1. They are both positive numbers. Positive 2 and positive 1. Positive 2 and positive 1, which means their sum is going to be a positive, which means their product is going to be positive. We have to do a little bit of work. We cannot figure out which one it is. We have to do one more step because both their sum is positive, because it's positive 2 and a positive 1, and their product is positive. We can't stop here. We're going to have to do a little work, which is not a big deal. So let's find out the sum of the roots. The roots are positive 2 and a positive 1. Positive 2 and a positive 1, of course, is positive 3 and their product is going to be positive 2. The product is going to be positive 2. So it's positive 2 versus positive 3. The answer is going to be A here. So in this particular case, we had to go all the way through until the very end before we arrived at something. But in a lot of the cases, we don't have to go that far. Do you understand? In a lot of the cases, we don't have to go that far. I have two more to do here. Two more problems that I gave you for homework. I'm going to put them down on the blackboard one more time so that we can do them in the next video in case we have not done them, but we're not going to do them right now. So 2.4.8, 2.4.8 goes something like this. x squared minus x minus 380 is equal to 0. And we asked to compare the sum of the roots sum of the roots versus versus 1. That's your homework for the next time. We're going to do 2.4.8, which is not in the book as I already reminded you. 
and 2.4.9 those two bonus problems in the, in the next in the next video one of them I already gave you the 2.4.9 I gave you in the previous video work on them ahead of time make sure you have the solutions before you watch the before you watch the, the video do you understand I'll see you in the next video okay bye now